So this is going to um, just quickly go over some of the in-class problems that we had. Um, this has to do with uh, Professor Puckett and I pushing uh, the car. Um, so how, how do we do this? Um, well, if you remember in the problem, uh, we started um, with a car. And Professor Puckett and I pushing it. Okay, and he's always in the back because I'm drawing this. Okay, and I'll make him shorter than me, although he's much taller than me. Um, uh, so we started initially at rest, and at the end, we basically were pushing this thing. We didn't get up to 35 miles an hour. <laughs> That's right. Um, we'll just use these these numbers, uh, although we definitely didn't get it up to 35 miles an hour. Um, I was thinking of a different video. But in any case, uh, let's pretend we got up to 35 miles an hour. How hard would we have to push it if we did it over a distance of 19 meters? Um, well, let's look at this. Um, let's just get all of our information down here. This is 19 meters. Basically, it's how far we pushed it, how fast we got it going, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so let's just look um, at this from an energy standpoint. Um, again, I, I always want to basically start these problems in the same way, which I want to say our initial energy is equal to our final energy. Okay, that's always true. Again, this is just the conservation of energy. It's just something that's always true no matter what. Um, as long as we have a closed system and nothing's acting on it from the outside, energy at the beginning is equal to energy at the end. So at the beginning, um, we uh, uh, we don't have any uh, kinetic energy. Um, we also don't have any potential energy throughout this problem because I'm going to just assume that the ground is level and that y is equal to zero uh, the whole way across. So so we you know normally we would have kinetic energy initial, we'd have potential energy initial. Both of those are zero. We do have, however, something that we're putting into throughout the, the um, this this process which is that we're adding work to the system. And that's just going to be the pushing work that I'm adding. And the pushing work, of course, is what's going to give us this energy at the end, the final energy at the end, which just ends up manifesting itself in terms of kinetic energy. So let's look at the other side of this equation. So I've put in nothing except for, we put in no initial kinetic energy, but we put in this pushing energy that we're putting in kind of throughout the, throughout the process. And then at the end, what we have is, we're going to pretend we stop pushing right at the end because we're not really interested in that. What we're interested in is, is this kinetic energy that we have at the end. Basically, we're pushing us to create this kinetic energy at the end. And again, there's there's no potential energy um, final. Okay. All right? So what we're going to interested in is, well, what's that, that pushing, all that pushing that we're doing? Um, uh, how, what kind, oh, what's it create as far as kinetic energy? What, what's the increase in kinetic energy that causes? The great thing is, of course, um, uh, the, in this case, um, the force that we're providing, this force push, is of course in the same direction as the distance that we're pushing it. And so if you remember work, the general formula for work is equal to force times the distance over which you're applying that force. So in this case, the the push, the work push, is just equal to the force push times the distance over which we're um, the distance over which we're pushing it, and that's equal to the final kinetic energy that we have in the end, which is just one half mv squared. Okay. Or the other way to say that is the the force of pushing is just equal to um, mv squared over 2d. Now if we make some simple assumptions for the mass, the mass was you know, around a thousand kilograms I think we said. Um, in this problem I asked you to use the number 35 miles per hour which is about you know around around let's say uh, uh, you know uh, 18 meters per second or so, um, that's definitely not how fast we got that thing going. Um, we, we, we couldn't have gotten uh, going much over 10 miles per hour, but I'll use the numbers I asked you to use in the problem. Um, uh, so we'll use 18 meters per second or so. Um, 
that's not exactly right, but it's, it's a close enough conversion for what we're doing here. And two, and then the distance over which we pushed it, which is 19 meters. And again, just see our meters cancel out. And we're just going to get kilograms per second, which it turns out is the same as, uh, um, it's the same as Newton's. Um, and so we'll go ahead, uh, looks like this is, oh, this is squared. It's only one of our meters cancel out. Okay. Um, so if we go ahead and do the calculation, um, so when I plug that all in, I get a, 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 um, value of around 8,500, um, Newtons or so. Um, which uh, should have it should raise red flags right away because that means that I'm uh, you know pushing uh, it with the equivalent of what it would take to lift an 850 pound person. Um, obviously, I can't push that hard uh, even even with Professor Puckett's help. Um, of course, the reason that uh, we're getting these silly answers is because I'm using this 35 miles per hour, which again we didn't actually get up to that speed. But um, it does uh, show you how to do these types of problems. And it uh, shows you uh, that um, if I wanted to uh, actually get up to 35 miles an hour in that amount of distance, uh, that's the amount of force that I would have to provide, about 8.5 kilonewtons. Um, I hope that makes, uh, the, the, I hope that, that clarifies this first problem. If it doesn't, uh, please come and see me. Uh, and uh, um, go ahead and watch the other f three videos uh, where I solve the other problems.